chemical equilibrium. Pretty much all the reactions we have dealt with so far have been reactions that go to completion, no matter the conditions. For instance, magnesium will react with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, regardless of temperature or pressure, etc. It would be very difficult to reverse this type of reaction. A reversible reaction is one in which the products react to give back the reactants, i.e. the reaction is going in both directions. We represent reversible reactions with this kind of arrow. An example here is the reaction between nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to form ammonia. Ammonia under certain conditions decomposes to reform the reactants. Chemical equilibrium is a state of dynamic balance in a reversible reaction where the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the backward reaction. This is a simple graph explaining the concept of equilibrium. The graph describes what is happening to the hydrogen and nitrogen reactants, and also the ammonia product concentrations. Initially, the hydrogen and nitrogen concentrations are very high because neither have reacted yet. Likewise, the concentration of ammonia is at zero because no product has formed yet. But once the reactants are allowed to react, their concentrations start to decline, and the concentration of ammonia starts to increase. There comes a point that both the reactants and the product are forming continuously at the same rate. This is what we mean by chemical equilibrium. A dynamic state is where the reactants are continuously forming products and the products are continuously forming reactants. A dynamic equilibrium is where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. The Chatelier's Principle Henri Le Chatelier was a practical chemist who studied chemical equilibrium. Chemists and manufacturers had a big problem with reversible reactions. If the product keeps decomposing into the reactants, then the product yields will decrease as well as their profits. Chemists needed a way to ensure that the reaction stays closer to the product side. Le Chatelier came to the rescue. If a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system will readjust to relieve the stress applied. Stress simply means a change in conditions such as temperature, concentration and pressure. The word stress and factors are both used quite often. Temperature affects chemical equilibrium. Chemists need to know if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. If a reaction is exothermic and chemists want to ensure equilibrium lies closer to the product side, i.e. more product, then they need to decrease the temperature, as a low temperature favours exothermic reactions, according to Le Chatelier's principle. If the reaction is endothermic, then increasing the temperature ensures the equilibrium lies closer to the product side, as a high temperature favours the endothermic reaction. Increasing the pressure always drives the equilibrium towards the side with fewer molecules. If there are equal numbers of molecules either side of the equation, like we have here, then pressure has no effect on the equilibrium. Note, pressure can only have an effect on gases and not liquids or solids. Adding more of a product will drive the reaction towards the reactant side. Likewise, adding more of a reactant will drive the reaction towards the product side.
The manufacture of ammonia is a process that depends heavily on chemical equilibrium. Ammonia is used in fertilizers, explosives, and cleaning detergents. The manufacture of ammonia is known as the Haber process. We have the overall chemical reaction equation, and we must ensure that ammonia is the product that is produced in large quantities. The reaction is exothermic, therefore a low temperature would favour the product side. Likewise, high pressure will drive the reaction towards the product side too. But there is a slight problem with applying these two stresses. Low temperature will favour the product side. However, we know from studying rates of reaction, low temperatures means a slow rate. There is a high demand for ammonia, so a slow rate of production is not ideal. In addition, reactions under high pressure can be very unstable and dangerous. In addition, it's also very expensive to maintain. Chemists must compromise and not have too low a temperature and not too high a pressure. Sulfuric acid is an extremely useful substance. It is used in producing fertilizers, cleaning detergents, plastics and batteries. The manufacture is done by the contact process. The name comes from having to be close contact between the reactants and the catalyst to form the product. The reaction is given here. Sulfur trioxide is formed. Later it will be dissolved to form sulfuric acid. The reaction is exothermic, therefore a low temperature would favour the product side. Likewise, a high pressure will drive the reaction towards the product side. But there's a problem with applying these two stresses. Low temperatures favour the product side. But we know from studying rates of reaction, low temperatures mean the rate is slow. In addition, rea reactions under high pressure can be dangerous and unstable. They are also difficult to maintain and expensive. Chemists must compromise and must not have too low a temperature and not too high a pressure. The equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant describes mathematically the relationship between the concentrations of the reactants and the products in the equilibrium mixture. For example, the reaction below. The KC looks more difficult than it is. Pay attention to the formula on the right. You do need to learn this off. We will look at some examples shortly to make sense of it. A large KC value means the equilibrium will be closer to the product side, so chemists working in industry usually want a large equilibrium constant. Temperature is the only factor that affects the KC. The equilibrium constant doesn't indicate how fast or slow the reaction is, just how far the reaction has gone, therefore catalysts have no effect on the equilibrium constant value. You are asked to write the equilibrium constant expression and then to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. It is good practice to highlight or underline what the question is asking you, especially as there is a lot of writing and it is very easy to make a mistake. We write down the equilibrium constant expression using the chemical reaction. Pay particular attention to the number of molecules and to put them as a power in the expression. We must now calculate the equilibrium constant. Step 1. Rewrite the chemical equilibrium in the centre of the page, that is the top centre of the page. Step 2. Write down initial as equilibrium and concentration as equilibrium. Step 3. Fill in the initial data. Highlight the moles provided in the question. For example, there are 6 moles of nitrogen. There are 18 moles of hydrogen. This makes sense because if you look at the chemical reaction, there are 3 times more hydrogen used as a reactant than nitrogen. Finally, the product is always zero for initial. This is because the reactants have not yet reacted yet. Step 4. At equilibrium. We are told in the question that 6 moles of ammonia is produced, so we record this. We are not told the values of nitrogen and hydrogen, so we must try to solve for these. We must find out how many moles for a single molecule. Looking at ammonia, we can see that there are 6 moles for 2 molecules. Therefore, 1 molecule would be 3 moles. Since we started off with 6 moles of nitrogen, there are only 3 moles at equilibrium. It must mean that 6 minus 3 equals 3 moles of nitrogen have reacted. We must not forget the ratio. For hydrogen, there are 3 molecules, therefore 9 in total. Step 5. 
Step 5. We write down the figures for concentration at equilibrium. Because we are dealing with concentration, it is important to know the volume. This is because the equilibrium constant expression is expressed in molarity, that is moles per litre. This is a 5 litre vessel, therefore we divide each of these figures by 5 to get the molarity. Step 6. Plug the information into the expression and solve. Pay particular attention to the powers. You are asked to write the equilibrium constant expression and then to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. It is good practice to highlight or underline what the question is asking you. We write down the equilibrium constant expression using the chemical reaction. Pay attention to the number of molecules and to put them as a power in the expression. We must now calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. Step 1. Rewrite the chemical equation on the top centre of the page. Step 2. Write down the initial at equilibrium and concentration at equilibrium. Step 3. We are given the information in grams. We must change these to moles. Step 4. Fill in the initial data. Highlight the moles provided in the question. For example, there are 1.5 moles of sulphur dioxide. There are 0.7 moles of oxygen. Finally, the product is always zero for initial. This is because the reactants have not yet reacted yet. Step 5. At equilibrium, we are told in the question that sulphur trioxide is 1.4 moles, so we record this. We are not told the values of oxygen and sulphur at equilibrium, so we must, we must try and solve for these. We must find out how many moles for a single molecule. Looking at sulphur trioxide, we can see that there are 1.4 moles for two molecules. Therefore, one molecule would be 0.75 moles. Since we started with 1.5 moles of sulphur dioxide and there are only 1.4 moles at equilibrium, it must mean 1.5 minus 1.4 equals 0.1 moles of sulphur dioxide have reacted. We apply this to oxygen also. Step 6. We write down the figures for the concentration at equilibrium. Because we are dealing with concentration, it is important we know the volume. This is because the equilibrium constant expression is expressed in molarity that is moles per litre. This is a 50 litre vessel, therefore we divide each of our figures by 50 to get the molarity. Step 7. Plug the information into the expression and solve. Pay attention to the powers. If you are asked to determine the equilibrium concentrations, then you will be told the value of the equilibrium constant. Step 1. Rewrite the chemical reaction to the centre of the page. Step 2. Write down the initial at equilibrium and concentration at equilibrium. Step 3. Fill in the initial data. Highlight the moles provided in the question. For example, there are two moles of nitrogen monoxide. Finally, the products are always zero for initial. Step 4. At equilibrium. We are told in the question that nitrogen monoxide is 2 moles. We are not told the value of nitrogen and oxygen at equilibrium, so we must figure out these. Let x equal the number of moles of nitrogen and oxygen. Therefore, it becomes 2 minus 2x because there are twice as many nitrogen monoxide molecules as nitrogen molecules. Step 5. We write down the figures for the concentration at equilibrium. Step 6. Plug the information into the expression. We are left with x squared over 2 minus 2x all to be squared, equaling 20.25. Remove the squares by square rooting 20.25. Manipulate the sum to get the number of moles. You could also use the minus b formula to get the number of moles. If you have time and want to check if you are right, you could put 0.9 moles back into the sum and try to solve for the equilibrium constant. It should equal to 20.25. If you are asked to determine the equilibrium concentration, then you will be told the equilibrium constant. Step 1. Rewrite the chemical reaction at the centre of the page. Step 2. Write down the initial at equilibrium and concentration at equilibrium. Step 3. 
Convert grams to moles and fill in the net initial data. The products are always zero for initial. Step 4. At equilibrium. We know that both the reactants are 0 0.25 moles, as the ratio is 1 is to 1. We are not told the moles of the products at equilibrium. Let x equal the number of moles. Therefore, it becomes 0 0.25 minus x for the reactants and x for both the products. Step 5. We write down the figures for concentration at equilibrium. Step 6. Plug the information into the expression. We are left with x squared over 0 0.25 minus x all to be squared, equaling 4. Remove the squares by square rooting 4. Manipulate the sum to get the number of moles. You could use the minus b formula also. If you have time and want to check that you are correct, then you could put 0 0.16 moles back into the sum and try to solve for the equilibrium constant. It should equal to 4.